Hi guys, uh, and welcome to my phone. Uh, this is going to be a little app, um, a little walkthrough of how to use this Lightroom app. It's pretty intuitive, but just in case you kind of want to see uh, what you should be looking for, go ahead and keep an eye on this video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I downloaded it, and I'm from the App Store, and I'm going to open it up. First thing it's going to ask you to do is sign in. It's a good idea that we all sign in using our like Hillsboro accounts because eventually it should be tied to a license. So just remember that it's your um, lunch number at hc, hcps.net. All right, and then it's going to take you to the county website. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording so you don't see my password. All right, so after you've given it your password, you can go ahead and hit don't show this again, and then you can hit yes. That way it keeps you signed in. All right. So um, I've already given permission to the phone. So let's see what it does here, though. The, if I say I want to add a photo, most cases it's going to pop up and it's going to say give permission for your phone to access your photos. Um, I already did that. So um, I took some photos in the backyard this morning. Got this old um, everyday look at, um, excuse me, um, escape ramp. So I'm going to click on that picture because I want to add it. Remember our goal is to kind of find like color and light and we're going to try to control those kind of elements in it. And the things we're kind of looking for, are, you know, everyday kind of things, maybe some, uh, some nature, maybe some, uh, walking through a parking lot, just sort of trying to capture like everyday moments that, that you can kind of make look a little bit more interesting. Um, so we're going to go to all photos here because I already imported a picture. I click on the picture that I want to import. And then here's everything that we need to edit. All right. So at the bottom, you've got all your options. Selective and, and healing, those are going to be good for down the road. But we want to do what we call like a global edit, which means we're going to edit the entire image. And we're going to try to adjust the colors. So the first thing that's usually a good thing to do is to go ahead and crop. And so you can hit crop down here. If I grab a corner or a side, it's already locked to what we call the same aspect ratio. And so that can get kind of frustrating, especially my Samsung has this like really cool cinematic um, crop, but sometimes it's a little bit too um, wide. And so if I go down here where it says original, I can click on custom. And then if I wanna grab that sort of side and move it in, I can. I really wanna keep that tree um, and the shadow in there. If you pinch in the center, it zooms in and you can zoom out like so. Also down at custom, if you're really big into maybe post stuff on Instagram, just keep in mind that like one by one or a square is typically the same aspect ratio. So that is kind of nice. I, I like how it kind of crops off the edge there. Really, I wanted to capture like the light and the surface of that old skateboard ramp. And yeah, it's it's got a bunch of holes and stuff in it. So don't worry, I'm not breaking my arm uh, trying to do that uh, but uh, yeah so that actually looks pretty good I might change it just a little bit to get a little bit more of that texture there we'll keep the tree and there we go I'm pretty happy with that sort of start in the top right and the shadow kind of f makes you fall down towards the bottom left so that looks pretty good I hit the check mark at the top so now it's cropped. Then down at the bottom is where you get all the options. So if I scroll, you can see there's tons of options that you can do here, right? The ones that I'm going to focus on for this are the light and color options. Okay, so if I hit light, that's where I get my exposure, highlights, shadows, and things like that. A good thing to keep in mind whenever you're taking photos is to always try to like underexpose when you can because it's more it's, it's a better idea to kind of bring detail out of shadows, but if you have it kind of overexposed and all those highlights just turn like flat and white. So I tried, I tapped on the middle of my screen and I brought the exposure down and then I was able to get some sort of like dark shadows in here, but there's still some, you can see some detail in there because if I go to exposure and I bring it up a little bit, I can see that I can bring up a little bit more or I can bring it down a little bit, make it super dramatic. I'm gonna bring it up just a tad. All right, and then contrast, 
you can either make it super, uh, you know, contrasty and those, those black and whites just sort of like pop out, or you can kind of flatten it out and make it kind of like a grayish tone. I'm going to add just a little bit of contrast there. You see the highlights right here in the center? I really want to try to get some of those detail in there. So if I go to the highlight and if I go to the right, you see how it blows it out? That's not really good. And I kind of want to bring it down a little bit, see how I can get more of the surface texture of that ramp. I can zoom back out. So I'm just pinching on the screen there. Same thing with shadows. If I look in the shadows here of that tree, I can either make them sort of lighter or I can make them a little bit darker. I'm going to kind of find a little middle ground there. I don't want it to be too contrasty. And the same thing, you can isolate white or black in the photo. And then one of my favorites is up here at the top is curve. So if you click on curve, what it gives you is, uh, it's basically what they call a histogram. So in the bottom left corner is the black in your photo. So if I grab that dot, you can see what it does is they call it clipping. So it clips and it makes the photo either um, not as much gray. So it kind of clips from black to like mid gray and assigns it all as black. And the same thing up here if I click at the top with white. So it clips a lot of the white across. They call it curve because really what you want to do is you want to make two points, one there and one there. And if you kind of grab those and you give it what they call like an S curve, gee, I wonder why they call it that. You can see I have like a subtle variation and it's not too poppy. You can also isolate just like the red or the green and blue. Um, since there's a lot of green in this photo, I'm going to grab the green one. Ooh, and just kind of be careful. I don't want it to be like too green, but I don't want it to be too magenta. But kind of dull it down just a little bit. Might show some more of that, um, that ramp. Kind of, I'm not too happy with that. I go to the red here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really getting what I want. So I'm going to go to another edit that's on here. If I hit done, I can go ahead and go to that bottom down here, right where the sun is. That's where we get our color. And this is where we have like our color balancing. So if I look at my photo, I can see there's like a lot of like bluish green. And so if I go to the blue green dial here, I can make it super blue, or I can kind of add a little bit more of the yellowish green to it. Just kind of what I want to go for with my color theory. If I'm doing like an analogous color with sort of like a bluish green or a yellow, yellow green. Um, so I'm kind of kind of dial it in there. You can see there's a green magenta slider as well. So just find something that you think um, is close to what you want. And then the really cool one is saturation. You know, yeah, black and white is a color theory. Uh, just remember though, like the photo itself, if it's gonna be full black and white, it needs to be pretty um, punchy in a sense, right? Like it's gotta have a lot of detail in it. Sometimes a photo like this in all black and white, it's kind of hard to tell what it is. But if I just add a little bit of color it gives it like a sepia kind of tone, and that's a little bit more interesting to me. Um, but I, I want to keep the color in there, and so I might actually even like boost it a little bit. And there we go. Nice thing about Lightroom is it's like a purist photo um, editing. It, it, it really is about not doing too much, just sort of like enhancing the photo. Okay, and once you've got it to something you really like, I'm going to zoom out. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, you don't need to save here. It's, already, it's saving everything you're already doing. If you go ahead and hit the back button, don't freak out. Give it a second. It should change in a second. And there it goes. And this is your edited photo. So now, it, I, if I want to get it like out of this Lightroom app, and that way I can put it in Canvas and things like that, if I click and hold on it, I get the little share button. If I hit share, I can say save to device. I can also get a link and do it that way. Um, you can even change the different ways that you export it. But I'm gonna go ahead and just say save to device. And now it's gonna export it to my device. Now, every phone is gonna be a little bit different. Um, it should be in a folder somewhere. I'm not gonna 
kind of browse through all of my pictures to try to find it, but uh, it should be relatively simple. If you have any questions and trying to find it, you can let me know. Um, but one little way of cheating it, if you're really having a hard time, and I understand sometimes, say, finding it on your phone, because I'm sure you've got so much on there. One little trick, right, is if you just come back to the picture that you have, and if you screenshot it, right, you could essentially turn in an image like this for now. I'm going to go ahead and crop it a little bit. All right, and that's one way to do it. It's not the best quality way, but, you know, I don't want you to get too frustrated um, if, when it comes to getting it off this Lightroom app or Photoshop app or things like that. All right, so guys, I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and thank you very much.